Welcome to World of Monsters, I'm Monster Master Arthur. If you're a subscriber and you've seen the original video, you may be wondering why I've uploaded this. Well, I thought that the original was a bit long, so I wanted to cut that down for more advanced people out there, cutting out all the small talk and unnecessary bits to just make a simple instructional tutorial video. So if you've seen the original, you can treat this as a more concise resource. Yet if you haven't because it was too long, I invite you to enjoy this one. For the demo Gorgon of Stranger Things, I found this figure to work with, and it's the figure of Pumpkinhead. I believe it's a McFarlane figure. I'm starting off with removing the knobs on the back and shoulder area. There's also these large protrusions over by the waist area with connected to the leg, so I'm removing those pretty much completely. Next, I remove the tail. Now we're going to trim that area out a bit, smoothen it out. We removed most of the knobs. Now removing the ones on the leg joints. Now I mark the parts on the foot regions that will be removed. So we're not going to shorten them too much as the arms would hang too low to the ground, but we will shorten them significantly, as you can see here. Second one removed. Smoothened out the back bottom area a little bit here, taking off small chunks of plastic with each slice, working on some more smoothening on the other sliced off areas. So I'm using a drannel and a sander to sand and smoothen the edges of the leg, and I'll be using that for other parts as well. Here's some regular super glue that I used to put these together. So I have the parts together now, he's standing well, and I'm going to be using this bit now. This one's not very sharp at all at the edges, and so it's very safe and easy to use with plastic like this. I'm going to be removing the, the little toe extrusions on the sides of the foot there. And first one off. Now I'm going to be removing the face. So the face is finally removed. So I'm going to be using this tool and probably a lot of the blade to smoothen off the large rounded area of the head. And here we go. A nice smoothened something. Black hole, dark abomination. Now I'm using one of the other smaller bits to again smoothen out some details here. I also use that tool on the leg areas and the other areas of the figure to smoothen out the slices that were made by the X-Acto knife and other bit. And I'm also using the tool to blend the joints and bones here sort of into one another so it looks like it's a continued ligament or bone, just as they were before. Here I got some polymorph plastic, which is an awesome, simple little wonder of our modern world. So I used that plastic, I warmed it up with water to make it uh, malleable, basically sculptable, and then I formed this shape quickly with my fingers. After I have this form ready, uh, now I start working on the pedal mouth parts of the Demogorgon. And for that I'm using this two-part mix for a flexible rubbery like material because I want the I wanted them to be kind of bendable and actually I wanted them to be controllable and adjustable so you'll see me putting wire in them as well but uh, actually you can make the pedals if you don't want to move them around and and have them soft you can make them out of the other plastic material as well I used this wire to place inside the pedals so this is the first piece I made mixing the white and blue in equal parts so here I'm placing some of this easily bendable wire into the putty because I wanted the pedals to be somewhat functional and positionable so you can open the mouth and close it and whatever. But with this structuring of the wire inside, it's not that effective anyway. And I also didn't really have any plans to mess with the mouth. So I recommend you skip this step unless you do want the mouth to be functional, during which there's probably a better method to install the wire because keep in mind the wire is going to twist inside into the new position that you made it. So to do it properly, there's other methods such as placing two wires within or attaching something like a sturdy sheet to the wire to keep its form within the putty. Here I have all the amounts for the different pedals ready. It's easier to measure out and make sure that each pedal is the same size by measuring these amounts first. While I'm still working the shape that I want, I put the wire inside, trying as best to keep it in the very center of the structure. And there you go, I have most of my pedals ready. I just have the fifth and the smallest one to go. That's basically the one that's a different size. The other ones can remain pretty much the same sizes. 
I'm applying super glue to the wired extrusion and that's what I'm going to attach to the hard plastic form that I created earlier. And here they are all glued in place. Put an extra super glue in there to make sure everything's uh, a little bit better supported. I used some more of the polymorph plastic to fill in some gaps, such as at the feet here. Now I'm creating the structure for the actual sort of inner mouth. I used the back of the X-Acto knife to better the form and push it in, tighten everything up. Once I have that in place, I fill up the little gaps with some more super glue to make sure everything stays together. And I did use the super glue under the inner mouth to initially get that stuck in place. I'm using some more of the polymorphic plastic to fill in the, the main portion of the gaps now. I use a toothpick to push them in. I also found that more effective than, for example, a fork or something metallic as the plastic will stick to that more. Once that's all pushed in and the form looks decent on the outside, I have to put more super glue in and around the edges of all the different plastics and as well as the putty touching each other. I also wanted to get the parts a little bit more smoothened, so here I pour in some hot water and remelt some of those edges and re uh, sort of sculpt them. Now I'm applying some of the molding flexible putty to uh, sort of tie in everything together. And that's what this level looks like. So now we're going to be working a little bit on the outside to start connecting the petals together with some flesh or putty. So here I made a roll of the putty. I placed it around and flattened it out to connect the petals together into one fleshy sort of organ. The Demogorgon officially has an organ known as the Fouth. I roll up some more pieces and squeeze them down and try to blend it into the rest of the sort of petal structures as much as possible so that it all of course looks as close as possible to being one piece of rubber or putty. Use a toothpick to smoothen it out. Now that all that is secure I'm making the thin fleshy parts uh, between the petals. Here we go. All the sort of thin webbed flesh is in place. I'm going to be using liquid latex and I'm going to be mixing that with paint to paint over the whole flexible material area as regular acrylic paint would just crack. Regular acrylic paints will work just fine for a large model like this. I mix them up about, I think it's maybe 50-50, no probably more uh, of the liquid latex depending on how strong you want the pigment to be. So I mix that up. And there I go painting it over. For the rest of the model, you don't really have to mix up uh, the liquid latex. It's nice because the latex gives it a certain look and a certain feel, but for the rest of the model, you can just use regular acrylic paint. Just make sure it sticks on. But the nice thing with mixing the paint with the latex is that it actually uh, sticks on as well. Whereas normally, if you're painting something, you need to apply a primer, or as on canvas, as a gesso, basically. And I believe that's my first layer of it. After that, I kept going and actually mixed up, I think, just black with the latex uh, to keep the color dark because it's always easier to, to lighten it. So here we have the whole mouth and head covered with the black latex paint mix. And then I mixed up some of the liquid latex with red and started covering the inside of the mouth. Here I mixed up some gray with latex, and I start covering the outside of the mouth. I leave the inner mouth, of course, black inside, as that's going to be the darkest sort of area. Now I'm going to be applying some of this basic skin color, so more of a fleshy tone mixed liquid latex to the edges of the petals. I start blending the skin tone in a little bit more with the red, and line the inner mouth with it as well. I believe I mix some of that tone with the red to create a sort of color in between. You'll notice there's also some a little bit of darker tint uh, within the petals to give them some more dimension. Here I mixed up some darker gray acrylic paint together and applied it to the model. I already started to cover the model with a lighter gray in the areas that uh, are more fleshy and protrude more, trying to avoid the serious crevices that should be darker. And here's the finished step so far. This dry brush, we get a lighter colored paint and we don't mix in much water in with it. And we sort of just scrub and run the brush above all the edges that you want to brighten. 
and there we go. And now for the teeth. I'm using the polymorphic plastic. I have it all sitting in the hot water here. I pull off a piece up like so, and then I pull bits of that into my other hand and just roll out teeth like that. And I found that to be an excellent method, hence I shared it with you guys here. You can always just put that plastic in the hot water and stick it all together for use later. Now latex after it dries can remain sticky to some degree, so one way to get rid of that is to apply baby powder. And I found a good method to place the teeth down into the mouth is to put a blob of the super glue gel on something that of course you're going to throw away and then grab the teeth with whatever way is easiest for you and dip one end of them into that glue and place them where you need them and then you can always readjust them with a toothpick or or as i am with the tweezers here and there you go the inner mouth is looking pretty good now for the petals one petal done four to go if you want to downsize some of the teeth, you can use scissors to actually cut them. And the good spot to cut them is about halfway in the middle because both ends are usually going to be sharp. So if you cut them in the middle, you've basically created two teeth. And there we have it. Teeth are placed. I made sure to place some little random ones here and there as well. I placed the longer ones within more of the center of the petals, as you see with the pictures of the original art and design of the Demogorgon. And they all, for the most part, sort of point inward. Now I'm going to be mixing some liquid latex with white and black and applying some more sort of dry brush to the prevalent parts of the figure. That's it. Making sure to make the ribs pop and all those knobs and skin wrinkles stick out more. The nails were already painted, but I wanted to repaint everything at a better quality as this was all factory painted. So I mixed up some white and this kind of tannish color, create a pale sort of yellowy tone. And then I believe I just used white to dry brush the edges of the nails to brighten them out and give them more range in color. And I'm also applying some super glue with a toothpick to some of the teeth that seem looser and I think to most of the teeth just in general to enhance their strength. I also finished painting the toenails and that's pretty much it. There's your finished demo gorgon. I also applied some watered down black paint onto the fangs so that they don't all just look bright and white. Ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between, I hope you enjoyed this Demogorgon toy modification custom action figure. To see it in action, check out our Demogorgon vs. the Xenomorph video. And until next time, be sure to make it a monstrous day out there. You've been watching Monster Mods, only here at World of Monsters.